Hello everyone and welcome back to Wandering with Jenny. Today we are going to take the ultimate road trip through Nevada, Utah, and Arizona. We are going to visit some of the most amazing parks, so get your hiking shoes ready because we're going to do it in seven days. Okay, so first things first, where are we starting this trip? There are three different locations that you can do this from. You can do it from Vegas, Salt Lake City, Utah, even Denver, Colorado. We chose to do Vegas as Vegas is a huge hub and it's much cheaper to get flights into. Before we even get going, let's talk about the top things that you're gonna need. You're needing a car rental or a camper van, sunscreen, definitely a must the national park pass hiking boots and a lot of energy okay so let's start with the car rental we decided to go with fox rentals which is just outside of the airport it was one of the cheaper options however the car wasn't that great i mean you get what you pay for so <laughs> Um, it's not an off-roading vehicle, but it did the trick. We were still able to do everything that we wanted to. Um, but if you are looking for doing more off-roading, because there are some off-roading trails on this adventure, I would suggest getting something with 4x4. Next up is the National Park Pass. You are gonna wanna get this. It is gonna save you so much money with all the different parks that we go to, as well as one of the resorts that we're staying at. The Park Pass will get you in there, and trust me, it's $80 as of right now in 2023. I will leave a link below so that you can go and sign up. Okay, next up is your hiking shoes. You wanna make sure that you have really, really good hiking shoes a lot of this adventure is going to be hiking so make sure you have yourself a good steady pair of hiking boots day one we're going to fly into vegas we're going to go pick up our car and then we're going to head to our hotel i would suggest staying outside of the city closer to where we're going to be starting our adventure and that would be the Holiday Inn. It's a perfect location. It's just outside the city, and this will get you up nice and early without hitting any traffic delays in the morning. So day one is flying in. Day two, we are gonna head out to the Valley of Fire. This is in Nevada. It was one of the first original parks of Nevada and still is considered the largest park. This stop is about 45 minutes away from Vegas. So the first stop that you're gonna hit is Three Fins Arches. This one here, as soon as you enter in from the west entrance, you're gonna enter into the park and it's gonna be the first road on your left. You're gonna get a map once you get into the park, so you'll be able to plan everything out. The next stop um, that we hit was Arch Rock. It's just like maybe a couple minutes around the, the corner from Three Fins. It's on the right hand side. And if you look over to the left, you're gonna see a huge rock mound there. And if you're lucky, this is where you're gonna see the desert bighorn sheep. I was able to get up pretty close to them. It was awesome. I was literally terrified though. Now your next stop is gonna be, I'm gonna say this wrong, I know it, a, a tall atoll rock where you're going to see the petroglyphs now here's a little tip when you park um to the right side you're going to see to the left the staircase going up but if you look almost dead ahead to the right you're actually going to see some petroglyphs that are actually uh, that are already there you can't get up close to them but they're pretty high up i'm going to say maybe 50 meters up 25 no not very good with meters, but I would say maybe 50, 60 feet up actually. And you'll see them there. So many places that you can actually hit inside this park. If you want to spend the entire day there, you can. We didn't, we just hit probably about four or five spots. We hit also the cabins, which were really cute and had pretty cool historical um, 
a pretty cool history behind them. They were built in 1935 and truly they're still standing strong. It's amazing what they did back in the day and how they held up. The last stop that we hit was Elephant Rock. A little hard to get to this spot, but just before the exit uh, gate, you're gonna see a parking area on the left-hand side. As soon as you come out of the parking area, you're just gonna take, you'll see a small trail going up to the left. That's what you're gonna follow. And Elephant Rock is gonna be up on the right-hand side. Now there's a big trail that's there. Unfortunately that day, it was 106 degrees. So we didn't hike that much, but there are a lot of trails throughout this park. I would suggest, just spending at least two hours here and if you can try and spend maybe four our next stop is going to be laverkin our next day we're going to be doing zion national park there are hotels that are just outside zion it's pretty pricey but if you stay in this little town called laverkin it's about a 25 minute drive to the park and the hotels there are half the price of what they are um, near the park. So we stayed in Laverkin at La Quinta. It was the cutest little hotel. Absolutely loved it. And I was just staying here. And like I said, it's half the price of what it is inside the park and even just outside the park. So now that you've checked into your hotel, refill those water bottles. And if you've left yourself enough daylight hours, head to Zion and go to the Canyon Overlook Trail. We didn't have enough time to do it. And to be quite honest with you, we were pretty exhausted from the day. But if you've got the energy, this is a must stop trail for watching the sunset. It is gorgeous. Just make sure you bring your flashlight. But one of the reasons why we came here on this night is because we want to pick up our gear for the next day. So next day we're going to be going doing to do the narrows you want to make sure that you get the proper gear it is so important you're going to head to zion outfitters which is just outside the gate you're going to go and pick up your boots your hiking stick and your socks trust me you're going to want these if this is the trail that you are picking for the next day inside zion Okay, so today you are gonna need to be up early, and I mean early. You're 25 minutes from the park, and you wanna make sure that you are on the first bus up to the Narrows to make sure that you avoid all of the crowds, because usually about eight o'clock, nine o'clock, the crowds really start to pick up, and around 11 or 12, it is so overly crowded. So. If you want to avoid all the crowds, make sure that you are on that first bus up. The Temple of Sinawava. This stop here is what you're going to take to get to the Narrows. Now the max that you can hike in here is about 9.4 miles or 15 kilometers and that is round trip meaning in and out. That will be the total amount that you can go and as far as you can go. We didn't make it all the way to the end. Um, you're gonna go as far as you're comfortable. There are some people who only make it to the first waterfall and then hike right back out again. Get a couple of pictures, get the experience. You can go as far as you, are, you can go as long as you're comfortable. Just remember as far as you go is how much you need to hike back to get back to the parking area or to reach the bus. So a couple of things you should know there's nowhere to get water. You want to make sure that you bring enough water with you. We had hydration packs and it was the perfect amount of water. There are no washrooms, absolutely no washrooms. There's no porta potties. There's nothing. You're going to find little tiny um, islands, I guess you can call it, mounds, uh, where you'll see the little red signs that say this is the area you need to watch where you're stepping because there is it's a bathroom that's where people tend to go but um it is a bag out which means if you go number two you're gonna have to bag it and take it out with you yes i know it's gross 
So even if you don't plan on, you don't wanna walk through the river, maybe you just wanna do a trail that day, there are so many amazing trails within Zion. If you want to add extra time, so if you wanna take your trip from seven days to say 10 days, I would suggest checking out some of the trails within the national park. Okay, so next up, we've left Zion, we've returned our gear, we're gonna head to Bryce Canyon. Now this is a little bit of a drive, it's about three hours. You're gonna actually take the scenic route through Zion, which is kind of nice. So you didn't even have to do it the day before if you don't want to, because you're actually gonna see it again. You're gonna take a little drive through the tunnel. It's really, really, really pretty up here. Then we're gonna make our way to our hotel just outside of Bryce Canyon. So we stayed at uh, Bryce Canyon Resort. It's about 20 minutes outside the park. Get ready because you're gonna take a sunset tour inside Bryce Canyon. You're gonna head to Sunset Point. Pretty much anywhere that you go inside this park is quite beautiful, but you wanna see the sun setting over top of the park and this spot here, it's called Sunset Point for a reason because it is really, really, really magical. And this is definitely the spot that you wanna to go to for sunset. Okay, rise and shine nice and early because we're gonna go see the sunrise at Bryce. So there are a couple of places that you can actually see the sunrise from. There's Sunrise Point, but I'm gonna show you a spot right now that you can see the sunrise from. There's actually three different levels that you can experience it. And it's not that big of a hike. It's just a little small uphill jaunt. Depending on which point you're hitting it from, the further you go, the higher up you go. So after watching that beautiful sunrise, you're gonna get back in your car and you're gonna make your way back down to Sunset Point. I would suggest doing one of the trails, at least one of the trails. This one here is the Navajo Loop Trail. You're gonna be able to see Thor's Hammer, Wall Street. So the Navajo Trail is about 1.4 miles or 2.2 kilometers. Um, the elevation change is 515 feet or 175 meters. I would say it would take you about two hours to get around this trail. It is definitely worth it though. And it's not that bad if you just take your time. There's so much for you to look around and see. So even if it takes you three hours to do it, this is definitely the trail that you wanna do. Head back to your hotel, enjoy some breakfast, and make our way up to Richfield. So we stayed at the Quality Inn. This is a perfect location. Now, it's two hours, and if you're feeling really gung-ho, I would suggest making your way straight to Moab at this point, which is four and a half hours. That's not including stopping. So if you want to have just a nice relaxed day and be able to enjoy your ride to Moab, Richfield is such a cute little place, and there's so many amazing little spots that you can stop on on your way up there such as Butch Cassidy's Childhood Home. We're gonna make our way to Moab. So along I-70, there are quite a few rest stops or outlooks, and I'm not sure what they're actually called, rest areas, I would say. A couple of the ones that you definitely wanna stop at are Sand beach view area. This one here is probably the first one you're gonna get out, have it stretch your legs. The next one that you're gonna stop at will be ghost rock view area. And definitely one spot that you really wanna make sure that you check out is the spotted wolf canyon view area. So now that we've made it into Moab, there are a couple options that you can do. Maybe head on over to Corona Arch. If it's not too hot, if you're hitting noon hour on a summer day, I do not suggest doing this hike. If you can do the Corona Arch, I would suggest doing it. We made it three quarters of the way. Unfortunately, it was just, it was so hot that day. I think it reached 104, 105 degrees. And that's just not something that we as Canadians are used to. So we made it as far as we could. We were able to see the arch 
and then we made our way back to the car and went over to the hotel and checked in. So we stayed at the River Canyon Lodge. This is such a cute little place. Now, Arches National Park, they have a reservation system. Here's a little tip that a lot of people don't know, is after the certain time, you actually don't need a reservation. And I'm pretty sure it's about four or five or six o'clock, depending on the time of year. So if you hit the park after that time, you don't need a reservation. You can just make your way into the park. The double arch and turret arch. Another spot that you can stop off is Balanced Rock, the Great Wall. There are so many little areas that you can go to before you hit Delicate. Now, Delicate Arch is an amazing spot to watch the sunset. You want to make sure that you are prepared for this hike if you're planning on doing it for sunrise or sunset. You want to make sure you bring enough water with you, you're wearing proper hiking shoes, you definitely want to make sure that you have some sort of light whether it's on your phone because if you're going for sunrise you're going to be hiking up in the dark and if you're going for sunset you're going to be hiking down in the dark next up is hitting the canyonlands national park again your pass works here so make your way down to mesa arch this is probably the most photographed arch in this area for sunrise and be prepared it will be packed for sunrise we opted out to hit it just just after the sunrise it was a little bit crowded but people were actually pretty courteous for when you wanted to take your picture underneath the arch here's a few of the viewpoints that you could see besides mesa Another stop that I really wanted to see was Dead Horse Point. The views from this area are phenomenal. Once you exit Canyonlands National Park, head to the right, you'll see signs for Dead Horse Point. Now, Dead Horse Point is not on the National Parks list, so there is a small entrance fee of $10 at this time, but the views from here are incredible and a must-see. So as we make our way south to Monument Valley, one of the must stops that you have to do is the Forrest Gump point. This is the point where Forrest turns around and says, I'm pretty tired. I think I'll go home now. This spot here is an active highway. So you want to make sure that you are paying attention to the road. Next up is Monument Valley. This is one stop that I wish I had planned better. I was not expecting the roads inside the park to be that rough. I thought we could drive in and drive out within a couple of hours, check out some of the boots around there. Unfortunately, one, our car, I just didn't trust it. And the roads are, they're horrible. So one of the great things about this park though, is that from the actual visitor center area, the parking area, you can see the most famous of the boots there. You don't need to take that big tour. If that's the one thing that you wanna see, you can see it right from the visitor center. So that's one plus. The next stop is in Page, Arizona. So you will be arriving here at nighttime. This here is the perfect hotel to stay if you are staying in Page and it's inside of a park, which your park pass gives you access to. So we stayed at the Lake Powell Resort. A lot of people actually skip Lake Powell when they come into Page. But if you're staying there, then you're not gonna skip it. And it's actually a really cool place. So rise and shine, it is Antelope Canyon time. There are, there are tons of tours that you can do through the canyons here. You have to do a tour if you're planning on going through Antelope Canyon. 
Now there is the upper and the lower. There's also Canyon X. I had heard that the group sizes for the upper and lower were quite big and it a lot of people said they felt very rushed and they weren't able to see a whole lot. So I was looking into a couple of different ones and I found Canyon X. Now it is just as beautiful. You're still seeing everything, the deep narrows, but at half the price. And the group sizes are so much smaller and they're able to um, take you through at a slower pace. It is really, really, really beautiful. And the tour guides are amazing. They'll even set your camera up and get it ready to make sure that you're taking the perfect pictures. It's a really great tour. And I would definitely suggest going with Canyon X. Okay, so food alert. On our way into Page the night before, we had smelled the most amazing barbecue. Big John's Texas barbecue. This is a must stop if you love yourself some good barbecue. We had, well I had the pulled pork sandwich with mash and it was amazing. Go and hit Horseshoe Bend. This is a small little hike. There's not a lot of shade. They have a couple of shaded areas they've built there. But if you plan on doing this midday, be prepared. It's pretty hot at this spot. So I would suggest doing it for sunset like we did. It is the last day. So time to get up nice and early. Go grab yourself a coffee from the Starbucks inside the hotel. Check out and make your way back to Vegas. Now hopefully you have a later flight or maybe you flew in at an earlier flight into Vegas and you get to do some of the strip. I would suggest if you've got some luck, why not try it out at the slots at the casino? Now I know that that was a lot to try and squeeze into seven days. It is a lot to do and hey, if you have more than seven days, I would suggest definitely doing an extra day at Zion an extra day or even two for Moab area. I hope you guys had a great time following me on this adventure and definitely make sure that you check out the blog below. If you haven't already, please like the video, give me a subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you'll get notified the next time I put out a video. And if you think that your friends or your family will benefit from this video, don't forget to share. Bye everyone.